Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate to you various commands that you can use for your docker run using your command prompt. You don't want to miss this episode if you want to improve your productivity in using the docker. Okay, let's get started. I've got Windows 10 here and I've already installed uh, a docker daemon in my computer here. I got several images here. The image that I'll be working on today with you will be Ubuntu and this is release number 20.04. So there's several ways to uh, instantiate a container. One of them would be to go here and go run and just hit run here. So what that does is that it creates a container for you. And in order to access this container on a command line would be to click on this CLI icon here, which stands for command line interface. If you click in here, it'll give you the command prompt. And from here on, you can just type all the Linux command that you need just like that right uh, so you have this functionality here but you can see that there's a couple of things that's a bit off I guess one of them would be uh, you don't really have a directory volume mapped of your base computer in this Linux here which can which can be handy because uh, if you want to move files into this Linux platform that's one of the conduit you can use CP command if you need it to be but that's another conversation here another thing is that they arbitrarily assign the container name this container name that was assigned was called thirsty halbit right if you don't if you want to customize it I'll demonstrate that to you next and another thing is that it doesn't have this functionality of using your arrow key to do the previous command and also use the tab you have to type every single command let me demonstrate to you what I mean by that if I hit if I type ls and if you want ls again if you put use the arrow key up or down it gives you these funny characters, right? And also tabs, like for example, CD, say S bin, press tabs, this is what you get, right? Uh, it doesn't have the TTY functionality, I guess, on the bash. Okay, with that being said, I'm gonna close this session here. This is what uh, it was automatically generated by the image here. So the best way to do would be to use your docker run command. That will be to use using your command prompt press window and R will bring you this window here and over here type CMD for command click OK and I'm gonna resize this window here and maybe make it a bit bigger font so that uh, you can see what I'm typing in here okay so I got it here now so uh, for example to run uh, to create a new container what you normally do is you type docker run and the image name followed by the tag name which is ubuntu colon and your tag will be latest so this is not this will create the image sorry the container for sure but it is non-interactive let me show you what i mean by that so if i go in here and go to container here what it does is that it goes ahead and creates a container for me here uh, and it grayed out. So what's effectively happening here is that the the container get created and the, and the container is running but it stops right away because it's non-interactive. You can see if I hit start, it tries to start but it closed right away, right? It's non-interactive. Whilst on this one here, it's interactive, right? Uh, the interactive function is enabled that's why the CLI is available so this defeats the purpose altogether so what I'm gonna do next is to make it interactive and TTY, TTY enable what I mean by that is this like for example go docker run and use a flag called minus IT so I stand for interaction and T stand for TTY so when I click enter here it will create a new container for me and you, you will go straight to the bash shell. Let me show you what I mean with that. Hit enter here. As you can see, we created a new container called Youthful Shannon and it's running and it's interactive. And this one here, if you look do LS here, you can see that all the directories are colored, right? So which means I have a TTY or I can use my cursor key and tab to navigate around on this one here. So what I mean by that is this, like for example, if I go CD, if I go to say uh, S bin directory, I type 
SB and press tabs, you can see it automatically fills up all my uh, remaining characters on the directory and I go LS, you can see. So if I go back one directory and then go LS, so, and if I use my cursor key, look how I can actually use my cursor key now, right? So, uh, so yeah, that's the whole function of uh, bash TTY. Uh, you can use all that. So, um, so if I were to say, for example, uh, this is on my DOS command prompt. In order to exit, you uh, you can type exit like that, or press Control D. Okay. So I'm gonna do that on the next version, on the next uh, as, uh, session there. So you can see um, as soon as I exit my session here, it this thing goes gray, which means that it stopped. Right. You can play to start it, and then uh, you can log in again if needed to be. But let me do this here. I'm going to try to use all my command prompt to do this, right? So first of all, uh, you can reattach this back to the session here. So um, like to before you attach the session here, you're going to have to start that particular container using docker start followed by the, uh, the container name. useful Shannon if you hit enter you can see that this gray icon becomes green which means it's played so effectively it's the same as pressing this play button here so once that's done you can actually latch on or attach to the console session here so what I mean by console session is this when you click on this guy here it comes to this window here this is your console session let me demonstrate what I mean by that so in order to attach the console session you go docker attach uh, useful Shannon hit enter so I'm on my console session now so if I go LS here notice how this thing get updated whatever I see in here you can see here so if I go CD S B tabs to fill up the rest you can see how this thing is mimicking this guy here right so LS you can see all the directories are matching and I'll keep going and all my TTY connections all my uh, bash TT uh, functions are working in the back the up down arrow keys are all working right so so if you attach the console you can actually see the console session here so I'm gonna go is go back in here so in order to exit this uh, particular bash you can, what I did just now was type the word exit Another way would be to hold Control D. It does the same exact thing. Again, when you exit it, you're actually closing the container, right? So um, another demonstration I want to do here was uh, this guy here. So if I were to create to create a container using this guy here, just run it straight up. So this one here, I'm going to try to attach to it see what happens here docker attach this is this is the one that was created using the image when I click this guy here right? I don't know how to pronounce it but H E U R I S T I C R O S A L I N D hit enter you can see that uh, a session comes up here but you can't type anything on it. I'm trying to type like ls or anything on the keyboard. You can't do it because this is this is sort of um, doesn't have a console. If you go in here, you can see there's nothing on the console that's running. So that's the difference between uh, creating an image from here or, and also from the command line here, right? So it's more interactive. It's more easy to debug. So if you have, like I said, if you create it using this run command a container the only way to access this session would be to spawn a new session on your session here this one here so this is actually a single session you can open multiple session on the container right and they are not the same at all this is one session here going to the boot directory and I got another session here on the same container going to and none of the tab and the key works on this one here. 
like that. And again, this one doesn't have that console session, right? So you can press Control D to exit, Control D to exit, and to delete this will be just to click that one there. So I um, just want to clean up a bit here. There's a bit too much going on in here. So uh, another thing I want to demonstrate would be, you know how it was so difficult to type this youthful Shannon or some something else. So you can actually change this name as well. So the way to do that is Docker run. We're gonna keep the interactive and TTY flag in there. And let's now if you want to give it a new name or rather a customized name will be minus minus name. And then let's call it X Y N E T test. And it's gonna be from Ubuntu, I guess. This guy here, the word Ubuntu. Ubuntu followed by the tag called latest. So what this command does is that it goes ahead and create a container, a container with uh, interactive and TTY enable. And this time around, the name is going to be called Signet as what I've been prescribed. And it's going to be of type Ubuntu and latest. Here we go. Go here and enter. And I'll, I'll enter the bash here. You can see uh, the container name is customized, right? And as usual, you can actually run the whole bash command in there. And to close this will be either, this time I'm going to type exit here, or control D. And you can see the container has stopped. Okay, so the last thing I want to demonstrate would be to map a drive, right? So, um, you know, to map a drive, you can't really do the ma drive mapping once you created it. But if you haven't, if you're about to create a brand new container, you can do it then. So the command will be docker run. I like to keep it interactive and TTY enable. And let's give it a name, I guess. Uh, you cannot have the same name anymore. So I'm just going to call it XYNET, say one, a brand new name. Um, and then on this one here, you're going to have to write minus V for volume. And then the directory that you're mapping locally here, say temp directory on my C drive and my base computer here or the host computer followed by colon and then uh, uh, a, a directory name that you want to map it to let me call it uh, say one two right and then that this is on the Linux side so let me expand this a bit better because the command is getting a bit too long here okay so put it here and then one two followed by ubuntu b u n t can't spell anymore e b u n t u ubuntu okay so latest so essentially what's happening is that i say docker run let me put this up a bit more docker run interactive tty and a brand new name customized name followed by the volume so map to a C drive on this base computer under the 1.2 directory. And this Ubuntu latest is from the image here, Ubuntu and the word latest. So let me go back to the container here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to container and hit enter here. So what this does is that it creates a new container called Signet1. And if I go LS this time around, you can see that there's a directory called 1.2. So if I go CD one and press one and press tabs, you see how this thing fills up. And if I do LS to see what directory that's in there, you can see I got all these directories. So this directory is actually, if I go to my Windows Explorer here and then go C drive and temp, these are the files that's in there, right? So all this like TLS backup is here uh, heck export is here they are from here so let's say for example for sake of demonstration if you want to copy say uh, copy this hack exp from this computer to this drive here right so the command will be cp and then uh, I, I say tls cmd 
and do a local directory called say home by the way home is a directory in this Linux here hit enter so if you go to uh, home and do ls you can see that particular file has been copied over uh, but if you want to copy a directory say uh, directory called this guy here uh, dss query, query here so you, you can do cp minus r for recursive and then slash one two right and one two is this directory here and then sp specify the name of the directory called dss qld query so this slash space is to is the escape sequence in linux so you have cp recursive cp space minus r is recursive for directory anything copy in a directory copy them space the directory on the linux that was mapped to or mounted to slash the directory structure this one here and then uh, the next one will be space and the target directory that you want to write to say on the same location called home so it's going to copy everything in here including the dssqld directory and move it in there for the copy in there hit enter and then you're already on home uh, directory here so if you do ls you can see i have a new directory called dssqld and if i go with dss and i go ls you can see the three files that i had here is copied over the other side on the linux platform there so those are the few commands that I want to demonstrate today. Uh, they are very, very handy command. Um, I hope you like the tutorial. If you do, please like and subscribe. Other than that, you have a good day. Bye now.